we always prepare for the worst. The Navy, Army, and Air Force are on high alert. You know, Sonia, on the whole, the people of Taiwan are calm and rational. Mm -hmm. But in uh, the past few days, we have found that uh, information warfare, disinformation, and cognitive warfare are more intense than live fire exercises. For example, the cyber attacks, the government sector has 30 million per day before, but in the past few days, it has averaged 170 million cyber attacks per minute. Wow. Website, yeah, websites were hacked and were showing some words attacking speaker Pelosi. And there is also misinformation. For example, during Pelosi's visit to, to Taiwan, it was reported that the U.S. military was withdrawing and the Chinese fighter jets had entered Taiwan's airspace or China had decided to evacuate the Chinese citizens in Taiwan, etc. But generally speaking, the message is to tell people if Pelosi comes to Taiwan, Taiwan will be in danger. And some people are more or less affected, like airlines, people, tourism, and fishery. Those people do worry, but they continue to fish or to do a business based on what the government instructs and have not been uh, affected too much. Okay. So we can say that uh, most Taiwanese people have experienced it information attack since 2018. And there are many fact-checking apps online. But now the government has responded quickly and clarified the false information quickly. So we are doing okay for now. Even uh, the Taiwan stock market rose 2.27%, ranking first in the world yesterday. So it means that the uh, foreign capital did not withdraw immediately. And Taiwanese investors are pretty confident for now. And what kind of impact are these cyber attacks having uh, on life in Taiwan? Uh, you know, China is indeed trying to paralyze the official websites of the presidential office, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and even the airport. And the frequency of uh, cyber attacks, like what I just mentioned, was 23 times higher than the average daily rate. And some websites were indeed affected for time, for a time, but they all returned to normal within, um, I think, an hour. Hundreds of new fake accounts suddenly appeared on the internet, but they were also found and stopped very quickly. But I believe that there are still many fake accounts in uh, Taiwan. But because, you know why? Because uh, China knows that uh, Taiwan's democracy, democratic system, provides openings for them. So Taiwan is a country that respects people's freedom of speech and freedom of press. Our laws protect this. However, this creates opportunities for false information to spread. This is why we have successfully passed um, legislation in recent years to stop mis uh, malicious, uh, persistent, and massive disinformation uh, within our constitution uh, framework. And with hindsight, was Nancy Pelosi's visit such a good idea, given how much it seems to have heightened tensions between the US and China? Uh, you know, Speaker Pelosi's visit is not the reason for growing tension between China and Taiwan or between uh, China and the world, you can never blame on victims. Thinking that uh, Pelosi came or Taiwan that Pelosi comes as a reason for the tension is not fair. The tension between China and Taiwan and the whole world has been there for, uh, has been there for uh, many years, not because of the visit or because of the Taiwanese people. And China also announced today, you might not know yet, China also announced today that they will extend the military exercise by 10 days to a month. 
in the past three days, they have been sending 100 times of warplanes uh, approaching and crossing the center line. And they sent like 13 to 14 times of ships and 11 by drones. Our country is highly uh, vigilant and the Ministry of Defense has been very alert. And what's Taiwan doing to prepare for a potential Chinese invasion? Uh, you know, actually, um, with these actions, China is simply pushing Taiwanese farther and uh, farther away. You know, I, I, I need to say, of course, we always prepare for the worst. The Navy, Army and Air Force are on high alert. But my personal point of view is everything is still under control. However, we never seek war. Our preparation is for defense, not for attack. We are peaceful people and should not be punished for believing in democracy. And I want to follow up again. China became more and more aggressive towards Taiwan since our first presidential election in 1996. But this kind of situation has to be uh, repeated for decades. Taiwanese are always uh, are already familiar with their style, but relationship between Taiwan and China has been tense for a long time. And the responsibility is not with Taiwan, but clearly it is China's decision to create such crisis. So you can never blame on victims. Cola's. Hello, it's uh, Carol Walker here. Um, just briefly, how much of this do you think is Chinese saber rattling um, President Xi and uh, those around him just trying to make a show of strength rather than actually seriously considering an invasion of Taiwan? <laughs> but I always believe that it's just uh, President Xi's uh, fantasy. We, they have been saying that we are the Chinese descendants. We are brothers and sisters. But actually, there are so many different pe peoples, cultures, uh, bloods, and even languages that are totally not the same uh, as uh, Chinese. We are not Chinese people. If you ask most Taiwanese, many people will tell you we are Taiwanese ethnically, not Chinese. So I think the, the outrageous nationalism make it more difficult for Taiwan and China become friends. Actually, Taiwan really wants to see the democratization of China. We want to make friends with China, but uh, we have to be treated equally as a sovereign, independent country. They have to wake up.